My first contacts with English studies was in 1965. And I remember, of course, that uh, the things were uh, going on in the building across the street, the philosophy building. My work at the university began in 1966. In the philosophy building, there were two big rooms and all classes were confined to those two rooms. I remember that many classes uh, were taking place uh, in the Palace of Culture. But uh, there was a, a trolley bus line going close to philosophy, so, and uh, the trolley buses were uh, driving towards the Palace of Culture. So they're always full of students of English, <laughs> in fact. Uh, we moved definitely to the building here behind me in 1967. Immediately after that, the name of institute was uh, somehow given to us because earlier this was called Cathedra. I became a student here in 1966. 19, not 1866, as some people would want to think, okay? So, um, so a few years ago, quite a few years ago, actually. And at that time, it was very competitive, getting into the, into the university and getting particularly into this program. Many things that we now take for granted were not available. So, for example, we did a lot of copying. So I remember people were competing, getting books out of the library so they could rewrite things by hand. You know, so this, is, this sounds a little bit medieval, right? My earliest uh, memories of the Institute uh, go back to the 1970s, that is to the previous century. We had very good teachers, though they didn't have, they didn't, they were not supported by any tools like today, technological tools meaning, but still I think we were satisfied. Surprisingly for many people today, I think, uh, we were not cut off from the major grants, international universities, fellowships. Well, the competition was tough, but nobody was promising us that because we are from the Western part of the world, we will be treated leniently. So competitions were tough. Uh, successful uh, applications demanded good projects, high quality projects, visibility, originality and everything else, but we were treated like everybody else. 1980, 1981, the hottest time probably in the history of our institute and probably of the university as a whole. It was um, martial law, okay, the time of martial law and then of course uh, we just couldn't think of any uh, possible excursions to the West. Um, and, and, uh, and such meetings. We were not able to organize conferences or just to um, have uh, accept some scholarships from abroad. Uh, so uh, there were problems and of course uh, there was um, uh, there were several cases of um, censorship. From 1990 the Institute was able to expand. We had increasing amounts of decision-making in our own hands. We had space here. And the first time we conducted our admissions in 1993 in this building when we had the commission, we realized that we had thousands of candidates and that it was almost impossible to continue having just 100 students in a year. I think we had 80 that year. So we decided to have fee-paying studies and doubled the number of students over the next few years. That meant we were able to increase the number of employees. We had a big increase in staff. And so throughout the 90s, I think we took advantage of what we could describe as the free market situation because we were given a great deal of freedom by the first act on higher education. And we grew, and because we grew, all kinds of aspects of the Institute's life and policy developed that hadn't been possible before. When I started the studies at the Institute, it was 1987, so it was, these were the communist times. Uh, there were restrictions on travel, on contacts, and actually the Institute was like an open window to the world, uh, to many, many different things. And I think that other students 
uh, from different departments from other universities did not have that chance and uh, so many opportunities. We moved uh, to this building uh, in October 2022, that is very recently, and I have to say, well, it was a major challenge and uh, it was a um, difficult time for all of us, uh, both uh, technically, practically and also emotionally because, uh, well, I think we all uh, got used to different locations that we used to inhabit in the past. One thing we can, we can uh, say for sure that uh, uh, this building is uh, very well equipped, uh, so we have access to all kinds of modern uh, technology, we have uh, laboratories, so from this point of view this is certainly a you know, very much up-to-date building that meets our needs in all respects. We split the traditional English studies uh, into two uh, programs which focus on linguistics and literature and culture respectively. The Institute of English Studies boasts um, an energetic and ambitious faculty uh, that specializes in linguistics, translation studies, literary studies, and cultural studies. We are no longer catching up with the world. Actually, we are part of an international conversation in recently developed fields of studies. We apply new methodologies to the well-established field of studies, such as Shakespeare studies, Gothic studies, memory studies, or Victorian studies. At the same time, we contribute to those newly developed fields, and the list is really long here. That includes uh, new media studies, medical humanities, animal studies, eco-criticism. We publish in international journals and uh, prestigious publishing houses such as Rutledge. We are members of uh, vibrant academic in, uh, societies. We are editors of prestigious um, leading academic journals. Coming into English studies, honestly, my first view was that I'm going to be uh, studying English or just mainly grammar and uh, I was really wrong about that. I mean uh, one of the things that I was really fascinated about is uh, uh, you learn many 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 different things. In terms of extracurriculum activities there's the Chiefal Hamlet's Academic Theatre Group of, uh, of the Institute of English Studies, University of Warsaw. We also have Second Thoughts as a uh, uh, sort of journalistic style student magazine um, and we have uh, Anything Goes which is sort of a creative writing process. So we have sort of different uh, um, um, ways of expressing uh, your sort of art in the Institute. I came to the uh, Institute thinking that I was mainly interested in the British literature, but I actually came here and discovered that I've come to really, really fall in love with linguistics. I never really expected that to happen. I didn't think I was the I had the capability to do linguistics in any way, but um, the amount of courses that were given as a choice to us and uh, kind of the chances that I got uh, really, really made me find that interest in me. I've been here for 20 years uh, and it's very much uh, my <laughs> home away from home. Uh, uh, we invest a lot of our time here. We're very dedicated to our work. I love teaching. I love uh, spending time with my colleagues who have uh, inspired me in, in more ways than one and that extends also to the students. Two years ago within the University of Warsaw Excellence Initiative I received a grant uh, which is which we call multilingualism right and this is a this is a grant that will enable us to create an interfaculty and interdisciplinary research team, uh, which we call uh, the Multilingualism Research Hub. Within Multilingualism Research Hub, we also provide training to linguists from, from our faculty, the Faculty of Modern Languages and the Faculty of Applied Linguistics. And uh, this training is not only theoretical, such as lectures on a theory, theoretical aspects of multilingualism, but we also give, give them hands-on training on how to use this modern equipment and how to design good quality research with the use of what we now have in the laboratories. There's a lot of courses, for example, introduction to literature or linguistics, which were things that I was interested in before during my high school years. And now that I'm here in the Institute, I can 
develop my interest even more and gain more skills and more knowledge from the sources that I wouldn't be able to find or access on my own back in the day. So it's, it's amazing that I can come here every day and learn about stuff that I'm truly interested in from great lecturers and resources that, again, I wouldn't be able to access or I wouldn't even know where to find them <laughs> before. I have friends who are uh, into literature, I have friends who are into linguistics, I have friends who um, do a completely different thing. My personal uh, topic in my PhD, my, my proposal for PhD is uh, very interdisciplinary. It is not necessarily only connected to English studies, it's connected to society, it's connected to general workings of a human uh, existence. And I love how I was very often given opportunities that would allow me to have different perspectives and more insight into different workings of society. Studying at the Institute, I think it influenced my so-called career or work a lot because I am working um, with literature. When I was, I think I was 21 or 22, so that was like my second year of studying, I opened my own publishing house. I translated my first book and I remember that it was extremely hard because, um, you know, I was just starting. I still, I still have the publishing house. We publish a lot of international books that we translate from English to Polish. Um, and uh, yeah, turns out that what I studied is my job today, so good choice. <laughs>